Welcome back to the Dynasty Nerds YouTube channel. I am Marvin Elquin. You can find me on Twitter at FF underscore Marvin E. And you might already be familiar with this video series, our backfield breakdowns. I started this about a few months ago with the Green Bay Packers backfield. So check that out if you haven't already. But for this video, we get to break down one of the most efficient and most productive backfields that we have in the NFL. And that's the Cleveland Browns backfield. We're going to take a look at what they did in 2020 and what we can expect from them going forward and how how that affects their dynasty value. So the Cleveland Browns, they have one of the best running back duos in the NFL currently with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Both running backs would be RB1s on their respective teams if they had their own backfield. But the, the reality is they share the backfield here in Cleveland. They'll continue to cap each other's upside for fantasy going forward, or at least in 2021. That could change in 2022, but we'll touch on that later here in a bit. So how did that translate into production in 2020 when they were splitting touches in this Stefanski offense? We'll start things off with Nick Chubb here, who actually had a shaky start to the season. In week one, Dynasty managers will remember this. Hunt actually outtouched him 17-11 to 11 to start the season. Fancy managers were rightfully worried, but Chubb turned that around pretty quickly in weeks two and three, where he finished as the RB4 and RB8 with 24 plus PPR points in both games. Also had four touchdowns in two weeks, so that definitely helps your fantasy upside uh, right there. But then in week four, he injured his MCL and left the game early, would miss the next four games. But what I want to focus on here is his final eight games, that stretch where he was one of the most dominant and most consistent running backs in the NFL. In his final eight games, he finished as a top 24 running back in every single game. Finished as an RB1 in 50% of his games as well. And that just shows the consistency and the, the value that he provides in your lineup, uh, being so productive whenever he's healthy and on the field. Accounted for 29% of the team's opportunities in that time span, was an absolute centerpiece for that Cleveland offense, averaged 18.5 opportunities per game compared to 13.6 for Hunt, so was the clear-cut RB1 for that offense, was the RB5 in rushing yards per game with 91.2, tied for RB5 in rushing touchdowns per game with 1, RB9 in PPR points per game with 18.4. It was just a truly dominant stretch from one of the best running backs in the NFL. And what I love about Chubb is that he checks so many boxes from an analytics standpoint as well. If we take a look at fancy points over expected, one of my favorite metrics to evaluate a player, Chubb was the RB2 scoring about 3.1 fancy points above his expected value. And what this does is it takes a look at his red zone work, receiving and rushing opportunities, and assesses an expected value um, with those opportunities based on an average running back. And the fact that Chubb grades so well above that above that number shows just how above average he really is. One of the best running backs that we have in the league. He's RB2 only behind Kamara, who had one of the best games that we've seen in recent history in Week 16. So that heavily skews his number. But if we also take a look at the advanced stats according to Player Profiler, Chubb was the RB3 in breakaway run rate at 7.4% was the RB1 in evaded tackles per touch at a 37.9% rate. And with those evaded tackles on added opportunities, he was the RB1 in yards created per touch at 3.15. That just shows that Chubb doesn't necessarily rely on the offensive line to produce. If he's one-on-one -on -one against a defender, if, if the line breaks down and, and the blocking isn't there, he can still create yards and gain beyond what's blocked for him in that backfield and that just shows in his consistency and his dominance and how above average he is from a fantasy standpoint just truly dominant uh, for fantasy in 2020. So to really sum it up Chubb is one of the best running backs that we have right now and I do believe that he'll be an RB1 once again this season even though he'll be splitting touches with Kareem Hunt but there is an opportunity for him to seize this backfield and we'll talk about that here in a little bit um, but for now let's switch to Kareem Hunt who once again played a complementary role to Chubb, was the RB23 in PPR per game um, at 13.7 points, which is 
fairly productive considering he was drafted as a flex running back. There was some uncertainty heading into the 2020 season there for him. So he was a solid flex or even an RB2 most weeks. Might not have RB1 upside, but he did finish 56% of his games in the top 24. If we once again take a look at some of those advanced metrics that I mentioned earlier for Chubb, um, Kareem Hunt was the RB4 and evaded tackles per touch at a 31.4% rate, created about 1.71 yards above what the line has blocked. That's good for RB6 and was only the RB45 and breakaway run rate. But regardless, this just shows how good both of these running backs are. They grade within the top uh, five, top six in several of these metrics. It's just truly unfair that both these running backs are on the same backfield. Now, the biggest draw for Hunt has always been his upside if Chubb went down. And we did see a stretch there from weeks five to nine where he was the lead running back. So I do want to focus on this here briefly. In that time span... Hunt received 36% of the opportunity share, had 19.8 opportunities per game, so that's targets and rush attempts, had 81.3 yards per game in that time span. So that all sounds good, but he wasn't actually one of, wasn't actually very efficient with those opportunities. He only averaged 4.3 yards per touch in that time span. Even though he was an RB1 from a workload standpoint, he was only the RB21 in PPR per game with 13.6 points in that time span finished outside of the top 24 twice, finished as an RB1 only once, even though he was the clear-cut lead running back for that backfield. And sure, you might look at this and say, well, he faced the Colts and he he faced the Steelers, two great defenses. But he also faced the Bengals and the Raiders, where he didn't really produce all that efficiently, where we expected him to really dominate in both of those weeks. Now, if we, we really see this in fancy points over expected, like I said, that metric shows how efficient a player is with their opportunities. So Chubb, as I mentioned, in total in 2020, finished 37.5 points above his expected value. Hunt, on the other hand, was 20.5 points below expected. So that just shows here that Hunt, while he wasn't as efficient, Chubb was supremely efficient and, and is the clear-cut lead running back for this team and should be going forward. Now, with that being said, both running backs are talented and would be great for fantasy in their own backfield, like I already mentioned. But if this past season was any indication, Chubb is by far the better running back and is one of the best in the league. And that's what we'll continue to see here in this backfield with Chubb leading the way and then Kareem Hunt operating as a flex running back for your fantasy lineups. And finally, let's take a quick look at the contract situations for Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt because I do think that could affect this backfield and their dynasty values pretty heavily going forward. Now, Chubb is currently on the final year of his rookie contract, which means he could be a free agent in 2022 if the Browns do not extend him. He could be in an entirely different situation in backfield in 2022. Hunt, on the other hand, is under contract in 2022 for a cap hit of about 6.2 million dollars his dead cap however is at zero dollars which means the browns if they decide to move on from him could do so with essentially zero penalty against their cap now where it gets a little more intriguing is chubb's current value for his upcoming contract according to overthecap.com chubb is currently valued at around 12.1 million dollars per year That's a pretty big contract to commit to for a running back, and with other extensions and potential needs on this roster, I do wonder if the Browns will commit to two running backs at top 15 running back salaries. Now, my gut tells me is they will have to split this backfield, and so they will either have to let go of Hunt, save about $6 million in 2022, and commit to Chubb, or they could save about $10 to $12 million and let Chubb go and and essentially stay away from that massive running back contract, commit to Hunt for at least one more year in 2022, and then they would have to address the running back position again in 2023. But regardless, if they do split this backfield, I do think there's an opportunity looming here for another running back to emerge. So Dearness Johnson is someone to keep in mind here. He had his one shining moment as the RB35 in week four when Chubb went down. Didn't do all too much after that. But Demetric Felton is another running back to keep in mind here. He actually was just drafted in 2021. He had um, a running back wide receiver hybrid role for UCLA um, and is a redshirt senior. So he's an older running back, about 23 years old, if I remember correctly. 
But his final stat line here at UCLA was actually pretty intriguing because of how versatile and involved he was for the offense. He accumulated 132 rushing attempts, 22 receptions, 827 total yards, which equates to 34% of the total teams, the team's total yards, eight total touchdowns as well. So that's a pretty uh, versatile and productive um, stat line, to be honest. And, and Kareem Hunt, his stat line is actually very similar in that sense where he's involved in the rushing game and in the receiving game. So I do wonder if Dimitri Felton could have a role here going forward. He's only a day three rookie though, so there isn't any guarantee that he could be on this roster beyond this, this upcoming season. So keep that in mind, but I do think that he is worth a stash just in case the Browns do decide to shake up this backfield after the 2021 season. All right, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video on one of the best backfields in the NFL. And let me know in the comment section below, if you were the Browns, would you commit to Chubb or Hunt or try to hold on to both if you can? And let me know which backfield you guys want me to break down next. Do you want me to look at the San Francisco 49ers with Trey Sermon and Mostert or the Houston Texans with a lot of question marks there with David Johnson and Philip Lindsay? And as always, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more backfield breakdowns coming up in the next few weeks.